You often counsel your members to be dignified in their response to yes. the president, take the high ground. Did you step on that message by tearing up the no, State of the not. Union? No, I did not. I tore up a manifesto of mistruths. It's very hard for us to get you to talk about the issues that we are working on, uh, HR3, infrastructure and the rest. He misrepresented all of that was necessary to get the attention of the American people to say this is not true and this is how it affects you. And I don't need any lessons from anybody, especially the President of the United States, about dignity. Dignity. Is it okay to start saying four more years in the House of Representatives? It's just unheard of. Is it unheard of for the President to insult people there who don't share his view as well as to misrepresent, present falsehoods. Some would use the word lie. I don't like to use the word lie uh, about what he is saying. So, no, I think it was completely, entirely appropriate. And considering some of the other exuberances within me, the courteous thing to do. Uh, it's appalling the things that he says, and then you say to me, uh, tearing up his falsehoods. Isn't that the wrong mess? No, it isn't. And uh, he has shredded the truth in his speech. He's shredding the Constitution in his conduct. I shredded his state of his mind address. That Trump has found a foe he cannot manage to beat in Nancy Pelosi is on display on an almost daily basis at this point. Here, the Speaker of the House responds to her show-stealing moment during Trump's State of the Union where, after what amounted to a stream of consciousness diatribe rife with lies and fear-mongering, Pelosi tore her copy of the speech in half. And God bless America. Thank you very much. And of course, the move was predictably followed by an uproar from the right, who were able to stop fawning over the guy who locked kids in cages and called for the jailing of his political opponents and siphon money from the military into his failing resort and attacked Gold Star families just long enough to feign outrage at the speaker for the cardinal sin of tearing paper. It's been a couple of days now, but I do hope those Republicans were able to recover, since I'm sure that they've never seen such a breach in decorum, and especially not in the Trump era, where this president is known for, above all else, dignity. In reality, Republicans lost their ability to complain before Pelosi tearing up the speech even happened. Trump started the event by snubbing Pelosi when she extended her hand to shake his. And then Republicans broke out into a fawning four more years chant as if this was one of his groveling rallies and not the floor of the House of Representatives. So while I get that the right must be incensed that someone dared stand up to Trump, it'd probably have been just a tad more effective if they didn't cut their own legs out from beneath them and upended protocol in deference to Trump's insatiable ego and crippling insecurities. In other words, if Republicans wanted to clutch their pearls over Pelosi's move, they should probably take care not to look like such raging hypocrites in the process. With all of that said, the point here clearly should not be on Pelosi's reaction to Trump's speech, but on the outright lies that Trump told in the speech itself. He bragged about protecting pre-existing conditions when his administration is in court as we speak trying to strike down the Affordable Care Act, which is the only legislation there is protecting coverage for those with pre-existing conditions. Trump claimed to support lowering prescription drug prices despite doing nothing to actually lower prescription drug prices. In fact, there already is a bill to lower drug costs called HR3 or the Elijah E. Cummings Lower Prescription Drug Costs Now Act of 2019 that Democrats passed out of the House and yet Republicans still refuse to take up in the Senate. And yet we've never heard a word from Trump to McConnell about taking up the bill. In other words, this is nothing more than just empty grandstanding for applause at the State of the Union. Trump claimed that his administration will always seek to protect Medicare and Social Security when not only has his tax bill resulted in less revenue, meaning less money being invested into those funds, but Trump actually suggested cutting both in his 2020 budget, requesting cuts of $25 billion on Social Security and $845 billion on Medicare. In other words, in some of these cases, there is literally zero overlap between what Trump is saying and reality. And the fact the fact that Republicans are under the impression that this is the speech we have to have pomp and circumstance around, that we're supposed to blindly rally around a spate of lies just because Trump said them from the dais, is beyond absurd. It wouldn't matter if it was said from the moon and broadcast back onto every television on the planet. If it's nothing more than a slew of lies and misinformation, then being torn to shreds is exactly the response that it merits.